Welcome to another Sunday's Word. We are excited to join you today, or it may be tonight for some of you, as you have an opportunity to listen to what God is raising in my heart to share with the people within the churches of God of Prophecy. As you are aware, this is the year that we would have had a state convention. And because of health concerns, we shifted it from a full all-membership convention to a leadership pastor and companion conference. And then because the concerns got even worse because of health challenges, we decided to postpone it until January. So I began to think about holding this word that God had dropped in my spirit until then, but Elwood Matthews always told me, Scott, if you hold a sermon too long, the devil will try and steal it from you. And as I visited around in some of your churches, this word has already began to creep out. So that's certainly an indicator to all of us who are preachers listening today that what's in your heart will come out. So today, I've decided that it's most appropriate for me to go ahead and share with you what I believe God raised in my spirit to share with all of the membership of Florida, then to share it with the pastors and leadership of our state now online. It's going to possibly go even beyond Florida, and that's okay, as long as Holy Spirit wants that word to be deposited in the hearts and lives of people. Then he said, my word will not return void. So I pray that as we share our heart today, your life will be enriched as much as mine has been enriched as I have prepared my heart to share this word with you today. Now, you might remember we started the year with this passage of Scripture in Psalm 61 and 11. Psalm 61 and 11. And that verse of Scripture says, You crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. We started the year with that passage. And now, today, nine months later, we are still carrying that passage deep within my spirit. That's been one that has been burned into my heart. It's been one that drives me in the midst of all that's going on around me. You see, we can be listening to the news. We can listen to all the bad news and all the trouble and the trauma that's going on around us. And we have a tendency to look more at those things things and forget the goodness of the Lord and the hallelujah and the abundance that is found in walking in the straight and narrow way there is an abundance found there there is a goodness of the Lord found there and that's where I want to dwell despite the circumstances we will believe 
Despite the circumstances, we will rejoice in His goodness and experience the abundance that He has all around us. Now here in our office right now, our office team is around and I want you to join us for just a few moments and to, to think about the goodness of the Lord in the midst of the trauma that you might be experiencing. There is goodness in what it is that you are walking in that the Lord wants you to see. So I want you to just take a few moments right now and we're going to join you and we're going to... Hallelujah. We are going We are going to be thankful. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We glory in your presence. We honor you, God, for the abundance that rises within our spirit. Oh, God, I am so grateful. I am so thankful. Lord God, I give you glory and honor and blessing. Lord, is to your name. You are high and lifted up and your train fills all of the temple. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Be to the Lord God, Jehovah. Our Lord God reigns in this life. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, we are grateful. We are thankful. And we give ourselves today to being thankful, to being grateful for your goodness and the abundance that we are experiencing even in spite of difficult circumstances today. So, Father God, these people that are watching today, our friends, Lord, that are watching, they are giving you glory. People all over the state of Florida, Lord, they are saying, thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done in their lives. So, Father God, we are grateful for your goodness. We are grateful for your abundance. So, Lord, Lord, we've just taken this moment, taken this moment, taken this moment. Hallelujah. 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 We, we also, as, as, as I'm thinking about this passage in Psalm 65, I'm also reminded of Psalm 103, where that the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Glory. You see, it's not just words that come from my mouth, but it's what's in the deep of my heart, what's in my soul as a steward of what God is calling me to speak about. Hallelujah. So it's not just what I say, it's what's coming from my heart that I say uh, when David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, watch, all of his benefits, who forgives all of our uh, iniquities, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, and satisfies our mouth with good things. So now we're going to take another moment here and we are going to think about the benefits 
benefits of salvation, the benefits of healing that we have experienced, the benefits of our life. Maybe you have been redeemed from COVID. Maybe you have been redeemed from some kind of uh, accident that, that, that you had and the Lord brought you forward. But you're going to identify something today and you're going to begin to give Him the glory and Him the honor with all that is within you. So let's take a few moments here now and let's thank Him for our salvation, for our healing, for the redemption of our lives. Father God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Father God, that you healed my body. Lord, I remember, I remember having a blockage in a heart artery at one time and God you dissolved that blockage you healed my body you do Lord I remember a time when I had a bone that was fractured and you healed that fracture in my wrist father God I remember those times I remember a time father God when we were driving and through an intersection and Lord how you kept our lives from being destroyed in a collision at 65 miles an hour. So Lord, all that is within me, everything that is within me, Father God, I give you glory and honor and I bless your name today. I join our friends and family in Florida and we bless the Lord all oh, my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name hallelujah hallelujah what an awesome God in fact as you think about those things I'm reminded of the passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 53 that says he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities so despite the sin that is around us that's bringing decay and death hallelujah he was wounded for for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And you know what that means? That means that my transgressions, my sins, my iniquities have been erased. They've been blotted out. Though they be many, they have now been blotted out because of the blood of the Lamb of God. That scripture went on and it said uh, that, that, that He, despite the war that goes on in our own soul despite the war that goes on within our own soul the battles that are fought in the church the battles that are fought against the church the battles that are fought even within the families within our churches that scripture goes on and says and the chastisement of our peace was upon him you catch that? The chastisement. That word chastisement actually means correction. So those wars that are raging, there is a work of heaven in the heart of men because of the Lord Jesus Christ where that He will correct the war that's going on in our families. He'll correct the war that's going on in our communities, in our nation, in our world. Jesus Christ came to bring correction to our lives and put it on a road that was in alignment with His will. That's what Jesus is doing today. Then it goes on in that passage in Isaiah 53. Now listen, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon Him. Watch, and watch, watch. And by His stripes, watch, we are healed. Do you catch that? Not that we may be. Not that we shall. But we are healed. So today, in spite of COVID, 
despite COVID, despite Delta variant, despite any other thing that might rise, our Savior, our Jesus is our healer today. Hallelujah. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. Now, do you sense that? Do you sense that where you are as our team is sensing what it is that God's doing there, He's also doing right here. You see, that's wonderful. Even though we're online, the God of heaven is here in Leesburg. He's also in Fort Myers. He's also in Crestview. He's also in Miami. He's also in Fort Lauderdale. He's also in Jacksonville or Tampa. He is in Key West. Everywhere you are, He is right there. And He is doing what He wants to do among us. And our, our role is, are we going to submit to how He is moving? That's a question. That's a question. Am I, am I today, am I going to recognize that God is moving? Am I, am I going to do that? Mm. That, 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 that? That's what I'm asking myself today. Because you have to understand, God is not a static God. God is constantly moving. God is constantly working. And God does not do everything today like He did years ago. God works differently, uniquely. He works one way with me. He works another way with Brenda. He works another way with Troy. Another way with Frankie. Another way with Joe. He works differently, but hallelujah, it is in the best interest of the one that He is working in, <laughs> hallelujah, to surrender themselves to Him and move when God moves, hallelujah, in order to experience God's power and God's result. Wow, He's moving, He's moving, He's moving. He's moving now like He did in creation. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that. God moving now like He did in creation. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, and the Spirit of the Lord, that's God, and the Spirit of the Lord, watch, moved across the face of the waters. <laughs> oh, God. Move across the move across the face of the church today, Lord. Move across the face of Florida today, Lord. Move, 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 move within our hearts and in our lives. God is moving today just like He did in creation. Now listen, God is also moving today just like He did in the wilderness. So how, how, how did He move in the wilderness? Well, when you read in the book of Exodus, you'll find where the Bible says that the angel of the Lord, watch, which went before the camp of Israel. Watch, it said that he moved and went behind them. Watch, and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Understand, God, God moves from place to place in various and sundry ways, not the same way every time he is doing what he's doing. He's not static. He is constantly moving in order for us to see where he's going that we might join him in what he's doing. God is working now just like he did in the wilderness. God is moving right now just like he did uh, when Israel fought battles, when Israel went forward in a battle, when Israel, huh, see Israel, Israel, Israel even had a Israel forward. We've got a Florida forward. There was a Israel forward. But Israel didn't move forward until they heard something that was uh, reflective of the movement of God. See, it's the same thing, Israel walking in the wilderness. When the, when the cloud of uh, 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 moves, uh, Israel moved. When the pillar of fire moves, Israel moves. So here, as we read about Israel in a battle, he said, this is what God said, when you hear, when you hear, watch, the sound of 
marching. <laughs> when you hear, my God, when you hear the sound of marching. Now you're thinking that marching would be on the road, that, that, that they're on the road. But here God said, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. <laughs> think about that. Think about it. When we think about marching, we're thinking about marching down the street, marching down uh, the, the, the sidewalk, marching through our house. House. But here he said, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, this is what he said, then you quickly advance. I'm just wondering if we've been hearing all kinds of sounds that, that really were God, that we thought might have been something else, or even said that it was the devil, when in reality it was God, and we're waiting, trying to figure figure out is it God is it me is it the devil when in reality when the sound began to occur we need to be quickly advancing we need to be quick hallelujah we need to quickly move in the power of God's movement in that moment of time God is moving now like he did then now watch watch the Bible tells us that Jesus said this I believe it's John chapter 5, verse 19. The Father works, and I work as well. Now, when you study that in John chapter 5, verse 19, you're going to find that the Son is not copying the Father, but the Son is working at the same time the Father is working. So they are working in tandem. They are one in the same. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus is the expressed image of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the expressed image of the Son. And then our responsibility is that we become the expressed image of the Father because of the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now that's up to you. And when you, hallelujah, man, I feel the power and presence hallelujah. of the Holy Spirit. As we move forward, it will be God moving because of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. We will move Florida forward. So my question is, are we going to move? Are, are we going to move? Are we hearing the sound in the mulberry trees? Do we know where God is working or are we still trying to figure it out? Listen, you may be taking so much time to figure it out. You miss the move of God. You miss what it is that He wants you to do. You miss the opportunity. There are times and seasons according to the will of God. And we as a church must step into the right time <laughs> knowing that God is at work. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I feel His power and His presence today. God is moving now like He did then. But the question is, are we recognizing it? Are we looking too much to the circumstances? Are we looking too much to our circumstances that we miss an opportunity to believe? Oh man, <laughs> listen, listen. Listen, any, any circumstance we face that's out of our control, it's an opportunity for us to believe that it is not out of control, but it is in His control. It's an opportunity for us to believe. Hallelujah. It is an opportunity for us to believe that things are not falling apart, but rather He is bringing them together to do uh, His will in the world in which you and I live. Right. My goodness. <laughs> Man, this sermon, this sermon is getting bigger every every moment that I preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is moving. Now what 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 hinders this? What 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 hinders this movement in our lives? See, God is always moving, but what hinders it in our lives? Well, I believe it comes from what I, I want to call the kingdoms in conflict. Mm -hmm. The kingdoms in 
conflict. You see, the Bible is a story of kingdoms in conflict. And the battle rages on in our hearts. Watch, that begins in our minds. The battle begins in the mind. That's, 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 where, that's where it's constantly turning. Is it God? Is it not God? <laughs> is, it, is it the devil? Is it people? What God? The, the, the rational, logical thinking when God's trying to raise us to a level where that, watch, our mind is renewed day by day and moment by moment. Moment. Why is he doing that? So that we can respond to God day by day, moment by moment. As he moves, we will discern his movement and we will move as he moves. I, 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 I hope you got that. I, 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 hope, I hope you embrace that here today. <laughs> that you will. In fact, I, I'm not sure I can even remember how to say it as I said it before. But I'm telling you, when God moves, we need our mind renewed moment by moment, day by day because God is constantly changing. He's constantly moving. Changing His method. Okay, methods of God are always changing. How He does, what He does always changes. So our minds must be renewed so that we can connect our mind to His mind. Hallelujah. Lord. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Watch, bringing every thought into the captivity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know where that's going to lead us? It's going to lead us despite the circumstances. We will believe and we will move. Amen. We will move. We will will move. Renewing of our mind. The war is raging for the control of your body through your soul. Listen, when someone is asked how you are made up, how you are made up, you know, we, we, we talk about men being a trichotomy, and I know that's a big word. Uh, the essence of man is, as we are asked, we say body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. What is man made of? He's made of body, soul, and spirit. But that's not the way that God created Adam and Eve in the garden. God created Adam and Eve in the garden, spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is the master, yes. the soul is the steward, and the body is the slave. But because Adam and Eve intentionally stepped out of the will of God, it wasn't a fall, it was a jump. They intentionally jumped outside of the will of God and it moved from spirit, soul, and body to body, soul, and spirit where that the body became the master, the soul was the steward, and the spirit was the slave. The slave being that the, 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 the spirit is subject to the prophet, the Bible says. So, my soul can keep the Spirit from rising within me to follow what it is that the Spirit wants me to do. But when the Spirit is the master rather than the slave, the soul, hallelujah, the soul that stewards what the Spirit is saying, then the body will follow the the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's where I want to live. And when I do, when I do, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move forward and forward. I'm, 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 I'm going to lead pastors forward. Yes. I'm going to lead individuals forward. I'm going to lead my neighbors forward. Right. I'm going to lead my friends forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I hope, I hope you're getting this. Oh, bless the Lord. You see, 
In, in, fact, in fact, when you read in, in the book of Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, this is what Paul said. He said, now may the God of peace Himself. <laughs> you catch that? Now may the God of peace Himself. Not, not, not some priest, not some uh, uh, man-made prophet, not some uh, apostle of His own. Uh, for as Paul said to Timothy or Titus, for filthy lucre's sake, he said, but may the God of peace Himself, watch, sanctify you completely. And may your watch, whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has called us and is faithful to do what He said He would do. 2 Thessalonians 5, 23, 24, and 25. Understand, these kingdoms in conflict, there is never... There is never a time when those two kingdoms within the same body can dwell. Just, just, just can't happen. Either I'm going to follow the Spirit or I'm going to follow myself. One or the other. That's the conflict. That's the battle. That's the war that's raging. There, they can never, listen, catch this, myself, Scott, Scott is always at war with the Spirit. But when I am sanctified by Him wholly, I have been changed to where the Spirit is filtered through the soul, where the soul is the candle of the Lord, and my body will do all that Holy Spirit is directing me to do. So there's not, listen, there's not a demilitarized zone. <laughs> If you please, there's not a place where that you can go that the battle does not raise. As long as we're in life, there's always going to be a battle. But you got to understand, there's always going to be a God that's fighting that battle, that's already fought the battle. And we, well, hallelujah, we fight from the uh, victory and not for the victory. Oh my, that's a, that's, a, that's a word right there. We fight from victory, not for victory. Because He's already won the victory. He's already won. So God is moving. God is moving. God is moving. God is moving. Sometimes we don't think that He is. In, in fact, think about it. Brenda has mentioned to me lately about, about the passage of Scripture that says, if your faith be like the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you say to this mountain, be removed and it will be cast into the midst of the sea. You, you ever seen a mustard seed? In fact, if you look onto our Facebook page, we may post this picture uh, along with this where that there's a finger and there's a mustard seed on top of it and the caption in the picture says, uh, I've got mustard seed faith and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You see, now watch, when, when he says that about the mustard seed, he said that the seed is planted in the earth and it produces a tree that birds can nest in. Well, if you know anything about horticulture, you'll understand that a mustard seed or a mustard plant doesn't become a tree like an oak tree or doesn't become a tree like a pine tree. So as you're thinking about that passage, you're thinking about, well, he says the kingdom of God is likened to a seed that's planted in the ground, a little seed, and it produces a tree that birds can nest in. We're thinking about a big oak tree. We're thinking about a big palm tree. We're thinking about something that's large. But when we actually look at it, it's, it's not so large. It looks much differently. And you know what I'm finding? I'm finding that if it, if, if it was to be so large and so big, you know what the tendency of us as humans is? Is to trust our largeness. To trust our bigness. To trust the size of our money clips. Or how much we've got in savings in order to do 
what it is that God has called us to do. Listen, God can take nothing and make something out of it. You may think you are just few in number, but God wants to use you as a mustard seed to produce something that impacts the community that your church is in. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The little kingdom of you is deceptive and dark. It appears at times to be beautiful and life-giving. But either we're going to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, or we're going to pray what we want to occur. Mm. And remember, Hezekiah prayed, Give me more years. And when he got more years, the last 15 were horrible, terrible years because that was not the plan of God. So I'm saying to you today, make sure that it is spirit, soul, and body where that, when the spirit speaks, it's being filtered through a soul that has been sanctified by Him and it, <laughs> the body then is slave to the soul that is submissive to the Spirit. That's where I want us to live. So let me ask you this. Wow, it's 15 minutes till i got to quit and I've got 10 more pages of notes. <laughs> but listen, what, what, what if the man with the withered hand didn't take the first step. When Jesus called him, what if he, what if he didn't take that step to Jesus? What, what if blind Bartimaeus... <laughs> Remember? Jesus came in and blind Bartimaeus was there and, and, and someone said to Bartimaeus, hey, he's calling for you. Jesus is calling for you. Now, 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 now watch what Bartimaeus did, and you read this in, in the book of Mark, chapter 10. Thank you, Scott Creasy, for uh, calling me to, to read through and study through and meditate on Mark, because it was here that this was raised to me again. Here, here, here it was, Bartimaeus was there. In Mark, chapter 10, Jesus called him, and when Jesus called him, here the Bible says that he took off his cloak. You see, his cloak was a black cloak, that was signifying his blindness. Okay? It was signifying he was blind so everyone would see and would know that he was blind if he was running into people or hit people unexpectedly. Okay, much like a, a blind person today with a cane. You see them walking down the street with a cane. You know a white cane and they're moving it back. And you know that that cane signifies that they are legally blind. But Bartimaeus, he didn't get up with his cloak on. He got up, he took his cloak off and he went to Jesus. And the reason he took it off was because he had heard that Jesus could do the miraculous. Even, watch, 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 even with mustard seed faith and he used that mustard seed faith took off his cloak and he walked toward Jesus so I'm telling you today I'm telling you today that thing that you think is a crutch in order for you to get around lay it down lay it aside and get up and rise to Jesus and allow him to do the miraculous in your life Amen. oh my goodness what about it? What if he would have sat there and didn't move when Jesus called? What if Peter would have never cast his net on the other side? What if, what if, what if that would, what if Joshua, what if in Joshua, what if the Levite priest would have never stepped into the water with the ark? What if, what if Israel would have marched around Jericho one day and then they decided to stop or three days or five days or even seven days and then stop without shouting uh, the, the, the sword uh, 
uh, they, they shouted something. I can't remember what it was. But, but, but here the Lord said, on the seventh day you'll go around and then you'll blow the trumpets. Oh, yes. And when you cry out unto the Lord, this is what's going to happen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, church. I'm telling you, uh, brother. I'm telling you, sister. I'm telling you, the one that doesn't know Jesus, when we follow Him, our lives will be changed. Mm. But what if we don't listen? You know what will happen? We will miss what it is that He has planned for us. We'll miss it because we don't exercise that mustard seed faith. Now watch. Or we intentionally abort it because we don't want to step into something that we don't know what's around the corner. <laughs> We're willing to stay in the boat and miss the miracle of walking on the water. We're willing to say, well, I, I've, I've, I've cast my net and, and there's no fish out here. I'm a, I'm a real fisherman, Jesus. You're a carpenter. I'm the fisherman here. You work on furniture. You build beds and tables and chairs. You grow, grew up in a carpenter's home. Well, I grew up in a fisherman's home. Peter said, so I, 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 but he didn't do that. He cast his net on the other side and he brought in so many fish, the net break. I'm telling you, guys, we could by our unwillingness to take that first step, intentionally abort something that God wants to do. Listen, that you've been praying for for years, but you are so afraid that you can't control it. You're so afraid that you can't manipulate it any longer. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't want to take that step, but I'm challenging you today. Take the step. Believe God. Trust Him despite the circumstances that are around you. Amen. Oh my. Listen, in 2019 and 2020, we were a church that was on our heels. A, a global pandemic shut down our world. Even our Resurrection Sunday services were stopped. Think about that. Why is that? Could it be, could it be that God in the midst of that was trying to do something in us so that as we're walking through it and we come out of it, we come out a different church with our thoughts and our uh, hearts being aligned directly with His thought, His ways, and His mind. Could it be? I think it was. I think God uses every circumstance around us oh, yeah. to cause us to see what we're not seeing. Listen, God will speak to us personally in our spirit about what's going on. And if we fail to recognize it, I believe He will send others to speak to us about what's going on around our lives. And if we then fail to listen to those around us, I believe He then takes the next step and we walk through some kind of calamity, some kind of difficulty, some kind of struggle, so that we will listen to what it is that God's saying. Now you don't want to think that God brings crummy circumstances. But you got to know He does. Isaiah writes, God will restore what the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, and the caterpillar hath devoured. Now we like to preach that renewal, restoration sermon. But sometimes we forget the very next part of that passage that says, 
my army that I sent in among you. Yes. So it had to be that Israel was not listening to God, so God brought calamity upon them so they would listen. I'm saying to you today, there may be times in our lives that we walk through calamity in order for God to transform us into the image of Christ that we might do, watch, that we might join the Father and the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit to move Florida forward, to move our family forward, to begin to declare, hallelujah, I shall live and not die, to begin to declare, Declare, I will be healed and I will not be sick and begin to declare oh, yeah. my children will be saved yeah. and they will not be lost. Yeah. God give me men and women with mustard seed faith yeah. to believe in spite of the circumstances. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I feel his presence today. Hallelujah. Let me remind you of something. The church, the church in the New Testament. The church in the New Testament, it moved from 12 to 70 yeah. to 120 mm -hmm. to 3,120 to the Lord added daily such as should be saved. And then it says that the disciples were being multiplied. <laughs> you catch that? How, 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 how long? How long? How long has it been in your church where that it's been the same 10? Mm. It's been the same 20. It's been the same 50. It's been the same 100. How long has it been? It could be that we're not moving as the Lord is moving. It could be. It could. I'm not saying that it is. I'm just saying it could be. And the only one that can determine that is you, Pastor. You, Pastor. God will speak to you about what, hallelujah, about what He wants you to do. And as the Spirit speaks, the soul must steward what the Spirit is saying, and the body must follow what it is that has been said. Amen. So the church is going to move from 12 to 70 to 120 to 3,120 to the Lord adding daily such as should be saved to the Lord multiplying the disciples. Amen. Listen, it's easy for us to forget the remarkable spread of Christianity over the past two millennials across the globe. The church has constantly moved itself forward. Then we now, today, must as the New Testament church in the power of the that spirit move this church forward <laughs> listen think about this when we when, when, when we when we think of Israel Bethlehem Jerusalem being the birthplace of our faith you got to think about it didn't stay there didn't stay there Remember Jesus said to his disciples, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel <laughs> unto all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Think about that. Those 12 guys may not have been any further than 25 miles away from their home place. And now Jesus was saying they were going to the whole world. Now, can you imagine the intimidation that they had to feel? Can you imagine the fear that rose within their hearts? Oh, man, I, I, I don't know what's around that corner. I, I, I don't know. I've, I've, I, haven't, I haven't crossed the sea. <laughs> the world, Jesus, are you, are you sure? I'm just, I'm, I'm just an old country boy. I'm just an old fisherman. Think about it. All of those 12 disciples, it was just a ragtag group of people. And some of us think we got to be so polished. And some of us think that we got to be this and got to be that. And got to have this and got to have that. Listen, God will use anyone yeah. <laughs> that He chooses to use that will take that mustard seed faith and believe Him despite the circumstances around Him. Oh, yes. I've got to hurry. Listen, the Ethiopian eunuch heard the gospel from Philip. Right. Go back, go back. Jesus said when he told him, you're going to the nations. But before you go to the nations, you need to stop in Jerusalem. And at Jerusalem, I'm going to do something there. 
That's going to be phenomenal. Just wait there until it happens. Now, think about it. They, they had no clue what he was talking about. They, 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 they didn't know. Now listen, some of us want to know what's going to happen before we get there. Mm. <laughs> and so we plan it out. We, we point it out. We structure it out. We system it out until it's dead, until there's no life in it. And it has no power when we get there. Because we're controlling it rather than taking the step just believing that God will do what He promised He will do. <laughs> well, that's the problem, Scott. I don't know what He promised He will do. Well, it's not... It's not there are times that we don't have to know what He's going to do when we get there. He just told us to go and He will give us what we need at that time and He'll produce the results according to that mustard seed faith that we use. <laughs> Philip heard... No, I, 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 I can't leave that other part. Watch. They got there. They tarried. They prayed. They tarried. They sang. They worshipped. And then all of a sudden, tongues like as a fire yes. fell upon each of them. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And there were people all around that heard the Gospel preached in their own language. And then they were receiving. That day, there were thousands added to the church that day when Peter stood and preached. These men are not drunk like you think they are. This is what Joel spoke about. That my, hallelujah, the young men are going to see visions and the young old men are going to dream dream. That's what Peter said, hallelujah, had happened. <laughs> and they took that word and they received it and thousands were added to the church that day. And then those same men shared the gospel with the, the Ethiopian eunuch. Those same men went to Asia Minor those, listen, 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 Thomas, what about, what about Thomas? Mm -hmm. Thomas, you think, is a doubting Thomas. Anytime you ask somebody about Thomas, they're going to say, he's, he was the one that doubted. He was the one that said he had to feel. But you got to remember, Thomas was the one that actually took the gospel to India, yeah. to a little state at the very tip of India in the northern part of that country, that continent that was Kerala. And the gospel began to spread in the country of India because Thomas, our humans doubting Thomas, believed God and said that he was going to carry the gospel to a nation that's beyond Jerusalem. So I'm challenging us today. Move your church forward. You personally move forward and believe God is going to do great and marvelous things. I gotta, I gotta wrap this up. Listen, the gospel has always been advancing for centuries. Now watch, and it's advanced in the most difficult times. Yes. Intense persecution, hardship, poverty, racism, division, political drama. The church moved more significantly in the midst of those times than it did when everything was smooth. In fact, when the Edict of Toleration was uh, written by Constantine and persecution stopped, I believe it was in somewhere 325 A.D. At that time, things began to level off and persecution began to drop. But when those things happened, the gospel did not continue to spread. You see, God uses crummy stuff to move us. But it may be, listen, it may be when we think about fear 
when we think about fear, we forget everything and run or we face everything and rise. We forget everything and run or we face everything and rise. What are you going to do with the fear around you today? There's, 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 there's fear in my heart right now. There was fear before I preached this sermon. But it was a fear that motivated me to do what it is that I'm doing right now. Yes. So there is a fear that moves mm -hmm. me or I can allow that fear for me to forget what it is that God has promised all that He said and run. Or I can allow that to rise within me <laughs> and I can face it. Anything and everything and rise to the occasion. Remember what Peter said? This is not what you think. This is not drunkenness. This is what Joel spoke of. Old men will dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. Your sons and daughters will begin to prophesy. God raise some prophets among us. Mm -hmm. Raise some apostles among us. Raise some evangelists among us. Raise some pastors and teachers among us. Raise these men and women, old men who have dreams. When they lay their head down at night, all they dream is about what God wants to do. <laughs> what God wants to release in them and use them to carry to the, to the church, to the community, to the county, to the state, to the nation, and to the world. But we'll never get there until we take the first step. God, give me some young men who will be sitting outside meditating on your presence and out of nowhere you drop a vision into their spirit about what it is you want to come out of them. God, give us dreamers and visionaries. Give us men and women that are spirit, soul, and body <laughs> and 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 <laughs> you know what? Here, 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 here's really what I want. I want men and women to be given to us that are body, soul, and spirit. So I, as a carrier of the gospel of Christ, who is spirit, soul, and body, can declare to the body, soul, and spirit that there is another way, that there is a better way. Oh, yeah. And in that better way, God will do things that they have tried to do and could not get accomplished. So I'm saying to you, will you forget everything and fear or forget everything and run? Or will you face everything and rise? Will you be a dreamer? Will you be a visionary? Will you be a prophet, a priest? Will you be an apostle? Will you be a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist? What will you... Will, will you be a leader? What will you be? God knows. And He will lead you to be if you'll take the time to listen to His voice. Father God, I pray that you fill every heart and every life. Move in every individual that listens to this word today. 
that they personally, individually, will use that mustard seed faith that you have deposited in their lives and you, Lord, would bring out of that one seed a plant that may not look huge, but it will have huge impact. So Jesus, we ask that you do what you promised you will do. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. May you be blessed as you lead Florida forward. forward.